Hello everyone and welcome to this video overview of our third evidence based instructional practice focused on explicit teaching and modeling. My name is Misty Higgins and I'm joined by Karen McDaniel and we are professional learning coordinators in the Division of Program Standards Office of Teaching and Learning at the Kentucky Department of Education. This year we are focusing our work on addressing two essential questions. First, what evidence-based instructional practices best support Kentucky educators in designing classroom instruction aligned to the Kentucky academic standards? And then second, how might teachers effectively implement these practices to help students meet the expectations within the CAS? As you can see, we are currently in year three of our three year implementation plan with that specific lens of looking at evidence based instructional practices. So really focusing on the importance of designing classroom instruction that utilizes evidence based practices that are necessary for students to reach the intended learning outcomes. So why a focus on evidence based practices? Well, first and foremost, all students deserve access to quality standards aligned grade level instruction, and we know from the research that the quality of the day to day instruction students receive can have a significant impact on their overall achievement. So by intentionally and strategically selecting and utilizing evidence based instructional practices, teachers help to ensure that students are working towards reaching the intended learning outcomes within the CAS. We are releasing six total evidence based instructional practices or EBIT modules. You will see there are three in the fall of 2021 and three in the spring of 2022, and you can see the release dates for each of those EBIPs. So while there were numerous EBIPs that we could have chosen, these six were strategically selected because they support students in reaching their intended learning outcomes across all content areas within the Kentucky academic standards. For each of the six professional learning modules that we release, it's going to include a video overview, facilitation considerations for structuring the professional learning, a general overview that defines evidence based instructional practices and looks at why they are critically important to students success, an introduction to the released EBIP that really synthesizes the current research on that particular practice, and then content specific resources to support classroom implementation of that practice. So now let's take a look at the third evidence based instructional practice, which focuses on explicit teaching and modeling. There are five key areas addressed for this practice. The introduction provides a quick overview of the importance of using explicit teaching and modeling in supporting students in reaching the grade level expectations within the CAS, while addressing some common misconceptions between explicit teaching and direct instruction. The second section examines the role the teacher plays in explicit instruction while identifying the characteristics of effective teachers of explicit instruction. The next section takes a closer look at how teachers can intentionally and systematically deepen student understanding of content through four effective direct instruction elements. The section focused on cognitive load and working memory takes a closer look at what the research says about how modeling works to reduce student cognitive load and increase working memory. And finally, the last section defines the various forms of modeling and their phases. In addition to the narrative portion that summarizes the current research on explicit teaching and modeling, we have also included content specific resources focused on the following three areas of support. Connections between the practice of explicit teaching and modeling and the CAS for that content area. Planning considerations for implementing this practice in each content area to ensure equitable access and opportunity for all students to learn the standards within the CAS. And finally, strategies and resources to support educators in implementing this practice in their classroom to support students in meeting their intended learning outcomes within the CAS for that content area. Thank you for watching this overview of our third evidence based instructional practice. As always, if you have questions, feel free to reach out to either me or Misty.